Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Joseph of the Lakes on this fourth Sunday of Easter. My name is Brad Rabideau, and our presider will be Father Mike Anderson. We also extend a special welcome to all those receiving First Communion and their family and friends in attendance. The announcements today are as follows. Attention 2021 high school graduates. This year, the St. Joseph's Men's Group is pleased to offer four $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors. All graduating members from St. Joseph's of the Lakes are encouraged to apply. Applications are available at the parish office starting on April 12th and must be submitted by May 6th. Congratulations to all of our talented graduates. The men's group will meet on Tuesday, April 27th at 7.15 p.m. in the Great Hall. All men of the parish are invited to join us for the meeting and camaraderie afterwards. We'll see you there. At communion time, communion will be brought to the pews after the first communicants have processed up to receive first. To be good stewards, we must be good shepherds, willing to lay down our lives for those committed to our care, not mere hired hands who run off, leaving the sheep to be snatched and scattered by the wolf. Please stand as we begin Mass. Good evening. Welcome to all of our guests, especially those who are here to walk with our first communicants. I want you to know I'm rather frustrated with all of our COVID precautions, even as you are. My favorite part of First Communion, one of my favorite parts of First Communion is to see everybody process up together and to see you in your beautiful dresses and suits and just as a whole group coming to receive communion. At communion time, you'll come up to receive, so we'll get some chance to see you that way. And all the rest of us are going to wait to watch, to, to really give God great thanks to see you receive him for the first time. But we don't have that opportunity to process in together. Well, but you're here, and you're beautiful. And we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, let's open our hearts to God's grace and ask him now to prepare us to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Uh-huh. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. The day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power, God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew. and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our hearts. and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. With your 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the, che- for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Again, I tell you, I'm frustrated not to see everybody walk in together. I think when you're able to do that, it's a great sign to the rest of the community that we're all united together. It isn't each individual somehow, but we're united into oneness. And that oneness is fully expressed, fully stated when we take that body of Christ and we put it in our mouth and we're eating all of the same food. When you guys did your communion retreat and you made bread and you saw them mix that flour with the water and it all of a sudden became this dough it was kind of all one and even though you might have individually made little patties with it to bake it. It all kind of came from one lump of dough, didn't it? And I think that's a really important sign and that's why we have you do that during your retreat. That you see that there's this one source. And we're all eating from one source. And even as we take Jesus into ourselves from that one source, Jesus, we also become one with each other in Jesus. We heard in that second reading today from John, beloved, we're God's children now. And especially as you're all dolled up in your first communion outfits, you know what? It's a good symbol to all the rest of us about being God's children. I'm so grateful that you dressed up for this day to allow this day to be a special day. I'm so grateful for your family and friends to be with you as they see this moment. And hopefully it's the beginning of many moments, but as far as we're kind of concerned as a whole church, this first moment today will be the same as that last moment when finally you have communion for the last time in your life. All are connected into the one moment of Jesus Christ. All of us are connected into one moment of Jesus Christ. There's not little pieces. We're tempted, I think, at times to divide our life into all sorts of little pieces. I got my school piece, I got my sports piece, I've got my gymnastics piece, I've got this piece and that piece, as if somehow I can divide my life all up into one, or all up into many different parts, and somehow I've got to figure out a way of uniting it 
the church would tell you there's one way that we unite them all, and that's in Jesus. And every time you come here and you receive communion from this point on, I want you to think about the fact that you're receiving with your mom and dad, and you're receiving it with your friends, you're receiving it with your classmates, all becoming one together. And if you know people who've gone before you and are in heaven, guess what? You're receiving it with them too. That communion connects us from the very beginning of existence until the very end of existence in the oneness of Jesus Christ. We're one together today. And that's what we're going to celebrate in all of our prayers, but that's especially what we're going to do when I give each of you his body to help you remember or to help you realize you're not alone. You're one in Jesus with all of us. Part of our union together is what we all believe. And so we're going to stand and we're going to profess our faith, we say. We're going to say, this is what we all hold on to. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The other folder. Through Jesus, the Good Shepherd, let us ask God to hear our prayers for the needs of this world. For Pope Francis and all who work in the church, for world and civic leaders, and for all in positions of authority, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of violence and chaos causing actions across the nation and world, for a renewed effort toward a peaceful solutions to differences and peace in our families and communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples of the world seeking refuge and safety from harm, and for those who bear the burden of poverty, prejudice, and oppression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women of all ages to listen with their heart's ear and discern the call to ordained and lay ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people in our parish, welcome to the table of the Eucharist, for the first time today, for their parents, this community, and their catechists who offered continued faith formation and witness of God's unconditional love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, seeking the tender mercy of God, we remember in particular Tan Kremen. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you sent Jesus to be our Savior, shepherd, and guide. Quiet our minds and hearts that we might hear his voice among the many crying out in this world. Hear our prayers and those we make for our archdiocese as we pray. Loving God, who gave St. Joseph to Jesus and Mary as protector and guide, grant that our archdiocese and synod under his protection and guidance may help us discern your direction for our church. May we listen as he listened, trust as he trusted, obey as he obeyed, receive as he received, love as he loved, and share in his life of devotion to Jesus and Mary. Amen. St. Joseph, Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand. The praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration 
And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out. And without end, we acclaim, Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, as betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sarp was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and to all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Share that peace now with each other. Lamb of God, 
you take with us into the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof. For only say the word of my soul shall be healed. I invite you to be seated. I'll come down to give communion to our first communicants. And after I do that, then the communion ministers will come among you. If you want to receive communion, if you want to stand or kneel, they'll give you communion. So, but the first, we're all going to pause and enjoy this wonderful moment of watching our brothers and sisters receive Jesus for the first time.
come to us so endless light come rising sun come endless light shatter the darkness of death Jesus hope of the Upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you redeem by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's congratulate our first communicants. What a wonderful day it is for us. So grateful we have the opportunity to bring you into the fold and make you one with us in Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.